Armour Seven Open joins me now. Tales of the City back after all this time yes. on screens. Yes. Yeah. You must be. Well, I'm wondering right now how I'm going to win one of those three ways with Mr. and Mrs. George Clooney. <laughs> Well, That's ask really later, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tales of the Never City. Never mind, Tales of the City. Uh, Tales of the City, when it comes back now, when we're going to see it start next week on the new mm -hmm. series, it's set in today's world, isn't it? 2019. Yes, it's right now. Yeah. Marianne comes back from New York after 20 years away, having left her, her husband and her child, yeah. actually. Um, so, it's an intergenerational story in a big way. We've got a lot of younger younger people that are living at Barbary Lane now, and they all get to interact with uh, the the previous characters, which I'm excited about because that's always been a theme in my life. And now that I'm older, <laughs> old, uh, it's nice to be have friendship with young people. Yeah, this multi-generational uh, aspect of life. Very so much so. I think that's what's the most moving thing about the show. There's a scene towards the end where you're just weeping because it's uh, they're all together and feeling the presence of each other. So obviously the, you wrote the books um, uh, through the 70s and the 80s and 90s, and uh, and, and the oughties. Yeah, and the noughties, the very naughty noughties. <laughs> yes. Um, so do you then had to exec this new series yeah. uh, with other writers putting those words into dramatic form. What was that experience? It was a little scary. Yeah. Uh, but Lauren Morelli, who was our showrunner. Uh, basically, uh, she was the she cut her teeth on Orange Is the New Black, so oh, wow. I knew she was good. And she told me uh, at the very beginning, "I promise you, I'm going to maintain the DNA of your characters," and uh, that's all I needed to hear. And she did. I I watch the scenes now and think, I could have written that. I might I didn't, but I could have. And I'm proud of everything they say. You know. It makes sense. Yeah, so obviously you're proud of this new series, but you must be immensely proud now to see how things have changed in the LGBTQ yeah. uh, arena and, and how you tackled very bravely back then issues, particularly AIDS, when that was, uh, that was new, wasn't it, in the late 70s, early 80s? Yeah, I, I, I hopped into that subject as soon as I lost a, a, a sort of a little brother in my logical family, as I call it. Yeah. Uh, to AIDS in 82, very early on, and I had to make my pain felt uh, to make other people feel it. So I, that always had been my rule for Tales of the City, to just reflect my own life and, uh, and trust that other people would understand. Now, you talk about your logical family. I find this fascinating. So just, you were brought up in uh, one of the Carolinas and uh, in a very conservative family mm. and rejected, would you say, by your family? Well, I wasn't thrown out. They still uh, welcomed me home, but uh, they continued to vote for the most homophobic uh, candidate in the US Senate, uh, Jesse Helms. Uh, we're family friends with, his, with him. Uh, and I never felt uh, that they got me fully. They claimed to love me, but I didn't think they had got me. Got me, And uh, so, I mean, by the time I got to San Francisco, I was discovering all sorts of people, both gay and straight, that were more comfortable about my sexuality than I was. My straight friends said, big effing deal. <laughs> yeah. Get on with something that's important when I came out to them, you know? And... Uh, and then a life opened up for me that is far richer than anything that came before. So, so that's your logical family. That's then. my logical family, and I re recommend it to anybody who's suffering from uh, ostracism from their own family. Now, you've moved to London just a matter of weeks ago, and uh, Sir Ian McKellen is uh, one of your friends, and you went up to his birthday party, is that right? Surprise a, birthday surprise party. Surprise birthday party in Bolton, mm -hmm. of all places. What was that like? Oh, it was so beautiful. Um, it was 130 people who must have all gotten on the train. A bunch of us were on one train, uh, and surprised him in the refectory of his old school. Isn't that lovely? And uh, the little the boys, the teenagers of the Bolton School, performed Shakespeare for us. Uh, and at one point, there was this little boy that had totally clutched, you know, just forgot his lines and was like a deer in the headlights yeah. there. And uh, suddenly, he was prompted by three people sitting near the stage: Sir Ian McKellen, yeah. Dame Judi Dench. <laughs> <laughs> and Sir Derek Jacobi. It's no wonder he froze. It's like the three best practitioners of Shakespeare in the world. 
or they're helping him through the moment. And they were his prompters. They were his prompters. That's lovely. It was so it? sweet. We were all weeping. Oh, fantastic. Well, we wish you all the very best with the new series and welcome to London. Welcome to the UK. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful time. Yeah, we're loving living lovely. here. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye-bye.